So I wanted to uh, flag a concept with you and then actually circle back next week. So the idea is, you know, the way that we both play games, like you definitely play more modern games than I do, but generally we won't play every single modern game that comes out in the year. So we will have perspectives on games that come out in 2020, but as opposed to, I think, a lot of other people who could genuinely say this is, you know, big wigs game of the year for 2020, I don't think we'll be saying that, like at this stage at least, I don't think. Uh, But one idea that I did have is instead, if we pick a year uh, back in the past, so like a rewind and do a game of the year 2020 for the year 20, you know, 10 or something like that or something trying to make it as confusing as possible (laughs) um so yeah like i just wanted to sort of float it out there get your thoughts um and then thought if you did like it then we should come back next week with proposals maybe three proposals each on years that we want to do and why and then hash it out live yeah i i love the idea and it's interesting so i've kind of gone through the last 20 years or so um and just kind of looked at oh what what games are in within this year and there are some big years um you know there's oh some, yeah there's some there's really some big years. years and what's interesting is the last i'd say 10 the, a lot of the big games um i've played a lot of them but there's a lot of them that are you know sony exclusives that i never played and What's interesting about those, if we choose that, then I'd need to uh, obviously find a way to actually play your Uncharted 2 or something like that. Um, but we, we'll cross that that bridge when we get there. But what I found interesting is the the more you go back, the, the bigger those years get. Um, and I guess that's just because that's when we grew up. Um, they're the games that hold special place in our heart. Like you start looking at SNES years and you're like, oh my God, like that, all these games came out this year? It's insane, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe as a bit of a rule, cause I, I was thinking about this cause I've already come up with some suggestions, uh, and I'm just trying to hone it down and I'm trying to make it more like eras rather than, you know, all clustered in the same period of time. But I think just on the year, cause like we are from Australia, you know, we receive things in different times mm. than U S and Japan, so some some games are legitimately like released over the course of essentially three years. I think just to make it simple, like we probably should just stick to North America release dates because yeah. that's kind of what you commonly see online. Like when you see summaries or Metacritic or whatever, it's I think it's just going to make our lives easier. And then I think we do a bit of manual work to reject certain games. So for instance, one of the years I was looking at, it had Mass Effect 2 in the year and I'm like... Mass Effect 2 didn't come out that year. And then I realized they were counting the PlayStation release of Mass Effect 2 as Mass Effect 2 had come out in that year. So, I mean, we'll probably talk about the rules next Mm. week, but I think it's kind of like the year that people know or like it's kind of like regarded as like the year that it came out in North America, like on the first platform it came out on. I think that's kind of the rough rule that I have in my head. Yeah, I that makes sense. Uh, I was looking at a certain game and I'm like, okay, what year does this game fall in? Um, because, you know, it's a game I love and I'm like, okay, maybe I can I can kind of tip the ballot a bit. But uh, it came out in different years for European territories and it did, which, you know, Australia falls under. Um, then it did North America. I'm like, well, I guess we'd have to go to North America. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, as you said, we're, you know, I... I I'm not going to be playing The Last of Us 2, honestly, probably this year. Maybe in the future, you know, I might play a lot of the games that I've missed on other platforms. Um, and that's a game that whenever you talk about a game of the year, you'd have to talk about that game. Um, so yeah. I, 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 I I, love the idea. And I think it's, it's going to be interesting because, as you said, the more modern, especially the 360 era, there's, there's a lot of games that I know you haven't played. Um, but I know as we go back older, you would have played the majority of the games that, you know, the big ones then. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, I honestly, I'm, if, if necessary, I'm considering picking up a, you know, maybe a a PS3 or something because, because there's, I've always planned on doing that. That's how I've actually always played PlayStation series, uh, consoles. So I've, I own a PlayStation and a PlayStation two, but I bought them 
in when in, when it was the next generation. So we're well obviously into the PS4 now, um, and I never actually went and got myself a PS3. Um, but there's a whole bunch of I'm not even talking about those big games, but you know, like your Personas and things like that that I never played. Um, so yeah, I'm I think it's uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, cool, awesome. So we'll circle back as a special feature next week because. Knowing you and I will get into a heated debate about what year we should pick and what year would have the most value to pick and debate. 